Good morning, good morning, good morning. Once again, today we're gonna to talk about beautiful lies versus the painful truth will make you hate it. Before we get into all that, shout out to the new economic crew. Love the comments. I love the thought and the attention you guys put into your comments. It is, it's literally a joy to wake up every morning and go through the comment section and see all these beautiful comments. So pat yourself on the back because you, you guys are doing it. Um, my video, Black Money. Um, one of the things that's very interesting because I still haven't been called cool. The most that people, the closest people have gotten to that is saying I'm full of self hate because I will be analytically critical of the black community. And this is where beautiful lies will outweigh the painful truth. I'm gonna tell you something. This has been my experience in the last few weeks. As you guys know, I have a car rental business and I have some wrecked cars. In January, I sat down, I hammered, I contacted claims adjusters, and I've gotten two checks this month, and I got two more checks coming, because I really tightened it up. And I will tell you one of the things that has happened. I have a wrecked Toyota Camry, a white wrecked Toyota Camry, that I've gotten a check for, but they're supposed to pick it up to take it to IIA auctions. And the guy sends me a message, oh, I picked up your car. And I'm like, no, you didn't. What they did do, what, what they did is they picked up someone else's white Camry, a 2009 versus 2012, and they gotta bring that Camry back. So I think that someone is following the stolen car police report because, uh, <laughs> woo, getting stuff done during this pandemic, man. So that's one of the things I've been focused on because we're looking at about $50,000 in insurance claims. And I've gotten 28,000 and I've got two more checks that I need to get. So I've been working on that. And during this process, uh, I had a 2008 Lexus 350, GS350, which was wrecked by a renter. So I got a check for $8,000 and I sold the car wrecked to a Hispanic man for 3,500 bucks because the car is wrecked. It, the driver's door, the fender, the bumper and the headlight were, you know, they estimate $6,000 worth of damage. If this is something you could do yourself, you could probably do it for 1500 and have your car because I paid 12 for the car. So to a Hispanic, and if you've ever been in retail or the flea market, you know, selling the Hispanics, they, they're pretty firm on their price. So I sold a wrecked car to a Hispanic man for 3,500. I sold a car with a blown engine to a white dude for 2,500. The car don't start, engine's blown, 2,500, because uh, it was called, was a donor car because he's working on the project and he needs the hood, he needs all those stuff. So it was right on time for him. Now, why am I telling you this? Uh, once again, I had a 2005 Acura that I got rid of and I was asking 6,500. I really only wanted five because one of the things I've learned when I put this stuff on the line, whatever I ask, they're gonna offer two, three, you know, so I actually jacked it up. I only wanted 5,000 for it, because I only paid 6,000 for it. So I had another Hispanic man offer me 5,500. Give me your money, sir. Here's the keys, here's the title, have a nice day. So, white people, Hispanic people, uh, they come, we talk, they leave with the car. Black people. Yesterday, I had someone try to scam me. Because uh, one of the things I'm doing is getting rid of all the problematic cars, the things that, you know, have been issues and stuff. And I had a 2009 um, 
9 BMW X5 for sale. I got it listed for 11,000. And I had these black folks come and they brought their little scanner tool and all this other stuff. And all of a sudden, the car needs catalytic converters. The car doesn't need catalytic converters. I checked with my mechanic. Doesn't need catalytic converters. So they tried to go from 10,000 to 5,500, which, you know, that's the game. I'm not mad at you for trying. Everyone's trying to get the best deal possible. That's, that's, that's not the problem. This is the problem. When I refuse to meet their demands for, a, you know, to literally take $4,500 off the price of the car, the demo person came out. He became mean. He's like, well, I hope you don't try to sell this car to someone else. And I said, that's really not your concern because I'm, I'm like, I'm not going down on the price the way that you want. So thank you for coming out. You and your wife have a good day. That was my final comment. Then boom, 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 boom. You old, you old ass, you a scammer. And then that was during the text because I never give them my actual phone number. I give them a Google voice number because, you know, I don't want them to have my number. And then he hits me up on Facebook. You a dealer and all this other stuff. And it, 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 I was sitting there like, once again, this is the painful truth. In the process of selling cars, I've had the most scams, I've had the most problems out of black folks. Now, if that makes me full of self-hate for articulating my experience with the black culture, so be it. Dude tried to scam me. You wanna know why he tried to scam me? Once again, I was driving the Porsche. Dumb, dumb. Oh, the dude got money. He can afford to take a hit. He can afford to subsidize my come up. Cause essentially what he and his wife were trying to do, cause they drove up in two cars, which I thought was kind of strange. What they were trying to do was get the vehicle and flip it. And flip it. And because I would not play their reindeer games, Rudolph got mad. I'm just sitting there like, I ain't, no. Cause once again, I am a professional online seller. I know that someone will come along and pay me 8,500, 9,000 for that vehicle. And I won't go through all that because it's called the finesse. First they came, they looked and you know, they raised the hood, they looked under the car, they opened the hatch, you know, and typically when people are doing this, I just stand to the side. I don't even talk to them. I let them do what they need to do. And then they like, can we drive it? Like, sure, here are the keys. They drove the car because the car is perfectly fine. It's perfectly fine. And I'm just sitting here as I go through this and I have another wrecked car, black person, because what, what I am finding out is when I don't meet their price demands, because essentially every black person thinks that they are a charismatic finesse God that they can just charm the pants off people. I'm just sitting there like, no player, because once again, I know what the market will bear. I sold a wrecked car for $3,500. I sold a car with a blown engine for 2,500. Yet I'm gonna sell to you a perfectly serviceable vehicle with two keys for 5,500 bucks. What planet they do that on? Because see, once again, and one of the things I've learned is I don't tell them that I have a rental car business. I don't even bring that up. Because, you know, they ask questions. It's like, this is your daily driver? And that's like, no. Nope. How long you had it? Six months. I just want to sell it. I don't get into that extracurricular stuff because what I am finding out is black folks are looking to be screwed at every corner. So what they're gonna try to do is screw you first before you can screw them. And um, dude, I had to block his number and I had to block him on Facebook because he was like, because he, he, he thought that he was gonna get it because he could easily buy this car for 5,500 and flip it and make 3,000. Easy. Tax season's coming up. 
And this is one of the reasons that I'm holding out because, you know, uh, <clears throat> I am not letting stuff go. And one of the things that I'm consistently seeing, uh, first of all, do try to be charming. First, I'm gonna put some sugar on it, right? And then the stick came out. And once again, I am abundantly surprised at the number of people who are trying to get something from someone become mean, condescending, and insulting. I'm just sitting there like, because one of the things is they don't know that I'm in a position to hold on to the car. I don't have to sell the car to pay my bills. And this is one of the things, because they're looking, because uh, I get what I like to call desperate pricing. People will like, I got um, another car I'm thinking about selling, I'm testing it out. And everyone black has offered me $5,000 less than what I'm asking. And then once again, uh, essentially when I get an offer like that, I just block the person. There's no point in even talking to them because here's the thing. And this is a lesson for you trying to sell stuff online. People who want to negotiate the price before seeing the item, once they see the item, and this is gospel, they're gonna to try to find every little flaw, every little thing that's wrong, every, and they're gonna to try to go even lower. They're gonna try even go lower. Uh, Cause uh, when I was in the storage auction business, I, I encountered these people quite a bit. Uh, these folks, they gotta get a deal. If they're not getting a deal, they're not buying it. They got to get a deal. And I've encountered these personality types frequently. And my partner, rest in peace, Francine, she wouldn't even deal with them. She's like, the price is the price. You buy or you go. She got Asian on them. You buy, you go. And they would come in and they would try to work you and they would try to work you. <clears throat> One day, there was one guy who was trying to work me on this piano. Now, we had looked up, it was a Yamaha, I forget what type, but it was like a $15,000 piano used. We were selling it for twelve five because we got it out of a storage unit. Storage unit cost 300 bucks, so we could let it go for twelve five. And this guy was trying to work me, and he wasn't trying to get it at for 10. No, 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 no. He was trying to get it for $4,000. Once again, these types are always dealers or other hustlers who are trying to buy products so they can flip. And then Francine, she's just like, dude, the price is 12. And she got up in his face and she was like, it is 12,500. Either you're gonna buy it or you're gonna leave. And then she went back to her little desk and I was like, hey, the boss has spoken. He's oh, it's like that. I was like, yeah. And then two weeks later, that piano sold for 12,000. So one of the things that you guys have got to understand because with the Dave Ramsey, you know, and interestingly enough on Facebook with my friends, he has the same opinions of Dave Ramsey. <laughs> same exact opinion that most of this advice is for people with toxic financial behaviors. But if you're like me, like Dave and I, Dave would like roll over because it's like, you got 40 credit cards, but see, Here's the thing. I got 40 credit cards that I don't use. They're not harming me because I have like, once again, I have Divi, which is a charge card. There's a affiliate link below. That card is for something that has cash flow. I have to have cash flow because it's a charge card and I have to pay it off. I already know that if I use this card on the 28th of the month, I got to pay it off. So I don't use it unless I have something that has cash flow. And I've had that card going on two years now. Never gotten, never gotten into trouble. Uh, my paydex is like 90 in my business credit score. So I don't really have no issues with credit cards because I have what's called financial discipline. If I cannot pay that credit card off, I don't use it. Real simple, real easy but the average person will use that credit card and build a balance and then be paying monthly payments and then get to the point where the monthly payments can't be maintained and next thing you know, they're getting a charge off because they don't have any financial discipline. Because 
One of the things that you consistently see, because I, I went through that whole overlay of what's going on in my personal life and my business life to let you know the beautiful true, the beautiful, beautiful lies. Graham Stephan is full of beautiful lies. Meet Kevin, because um, I haven't, I guarantee you, if I go through their videos, because I don't watch them, they will say that stocks are compound interest. And if you're financially literate, and you're financial education, you have a good financial education, you know that compound interest and stocks don't go together. You would know that. Uh, whenever I talk to financially literate people, they know these things. They know these things. But the, 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 this one person who's like, I gotta unsubscribe because you don't understand compound interest. And he, he was talking about stocks. And it's like, stocks don't have compound interest. He didn't even know that because he was a parrot regurgitating something that he heard versus doing his own independent analysis. And one of the things that I find to be really interesting because once again, shout out to the Institute of Economic Thought crew. Um, the people who challenged me, they challenged me from an emotional space, not a factual space. And the people who try to get factual, they can't add. Go to the investment calculator. I've done this. I've, I've spent hours on the investment calculator crunching numbers. I know my numbers are sound. I know my numbers are solid. And they'll go up and they'll like, you know, once again, the whole thing is that the average person, once again, and this is um, about my video the other day, being average is over. You cannot be average and get rich in America. That's an ugly truth. But this is the thing that people are trying to do. They're trying to get rich without changing who they are. And that's going to be a big, big problem because who you are. Because, all right, I want you to look at your life. I want you to look at who you date. I want you to look at um, where you live. I want you to look at what you drive. I want you to look at your bank account. All of those variables are the sum of who you are right now. And until you change who you are, those things are not going to change. They may actually get worse, but they're not going to get better. They're not going to get better. And this is one of the things like, uh, you know, I'm going to give you some guys a little insights into me. Um, I posted in the community page, like my life insurance policy is 436 per month because I'm, you know, I've had a heart attack. I'm older and people's like, you got millions. Why you got life insurance? And once again, I'm going to tell you why I have life insurance. The life insurance is for a woman that I have not met. I feel in the next few years, I'm not seriously dating anyone, but I feel in the next few years, I'm gonna get married. And based upon the way that I set up my, I have a trust fund, I have a trust. And I have an irrevocable trust. And it was one of the dumbest things I ever did because for the, you can have a revocable trust and you have an irrevocable, 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 you can't change nothing. So once you put it together, you can't change anything. So the majority of my wealth is in this irrevocable trust, which cannot be changed. I can't add any beneficiaries. Uh, I can't do nothing. It's what it is, what it is. So uh, I get married. Um, I'm a pretty generous guy and I get married. My wife will become the beneficiary of that life insurance policy. So that's why I have the life insurance policy, because essentially the way stuff is, she would be locked out. She'd be locked out. And if we have a child, the day that child is born, guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go out and get another life insurance policy and make that, that child a beneficiary of that policy. See, once again, I know, I don't wanna sound elitist, but I'm not an average motherfucker. My life is nothing like your life. I walked into a Porsche dealership and dropped cash on a brand new Porsche. 99% of America can't do this. And a lot of so-called millionaires can't do that because they don't have the cash. I don't, my life ain't nothing like yours. I'm not trying to be dismissive, but once again, listen to me. When I make a move, 
I'm not making a move predicated on how you would make a move because one of the things that uh, I may do a whole video about this, I am not afraid to pay the cost to be the boss. And many of you are trying to be the boss, but you don't want to pay the cost. Kind of like all these folks who are trying to finesse me for these cars. I'm just sitting there like, dude, because I'm a professional online seller. Um, this is just, just for giggles. This is something that I, I recently did. Uh, I got the Apple card and the way to get 3% cash back is to buy from the Apple store, right? And this is something because I know the market. Do you know there are people on eBay that will pay way more for an iPhone? I don't know why they do it, but they will do it. And I listed an iPhone that I bought for 1300 bucks with taxes for $19.99 on eBay. It sold. <laughs> so I got 3% cash back and I made a profit of 400 bucks. I'm just sitting there like, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna, I'm gonna order another iPhone and I'm gonna put it on there and I'm gonna see what I can do. That's gonna be my little hustle. I mean, because it's simple. It's simple. Order the, you know, the, the delivered iPhone and I just go ahead and put the iPhone in the party mailer. I mailed it out already. They paid, I mailed it out. $2,000 for, I don't know why, but once again, so, I know in the market, because I know for that X5 that I got for sale, that someone's gonna come, they're gonna look at it, they're gonna drive it, and they're gonna make me an offer that's not gonna be some low ball offer. And, you know, it, it, is, it is wild. It is wild because I remember when I used to be in the storage auction business, dealing with um, Hispanics was hard. If you wouldn't meet their price, they would walk out. They would not sit down and try to finesse you. And th this is something else too. Um, I'm about to say something that's gonna sound very dismissive and elitist. If your finesse skills are so good, why are you broke? If your finesse skills are so powerful, why are you driving an old car? If your finesse skills are so good, why do you live in the hood? Please answer those questions in the comments below, since your finesse skills are so good. Because this is one of the things, uh, there's some channels that I kind of keep, I'm not mentioning them because I don't want to direct you to that crap, but they're finesse channels and they're putting out horrible information, horrible information. And one of the things that I consistently see, and YouTube is full of beautiful lives, like the Age Corporation. All right, I run a real business, I have real LLCs, I have real business credit, and I can tell you that you cannot walk into a bank with an Age Corporation with some fake trade lines or some bought trade lines on your, your account and get $500,000. I'm telling you, you can't do it because what a bank's gonna ask for is two, one of two things. So they may ask for both. First of all, if you have a banking relationship where they can go into your accounts and see your money, that's one way you can get that loan. And a lot of banks will do that and they, they will still ask you for your tax information. You ain't getting around that, but you have so many finesse gods that are like, yeah, you can get you an age corporation, you can do this, and it's all, speaking to desperate people because I was thinking why is it that I am comfortable like you know I'm thinking about starting this credit repair business and I've been doing this for three months I'm just doing the preliminary research and I am comfortable doing that but for some reason desperate people if they can't make money in two weeks or 30 days they're out and for me, and this, this, is, this is a painful truth, when you work hard consistently in the right areas, you can, you, can, you can work hard in the wrong area and you're not gonna get a return, that's just a given. But if you work hard in the right areas, every time in my life I have worked hard <clears throat> and diligently and did the right things, I made a ton of money. 
Like right now, I got people leaving comments. I know you're trying to sell something. Uh, I haven't been selling anything on this YouTube channel in about three months. I've not been directing it because once again, I'm a professional so I know how to do this. You wanna know why I'm not selling it? Because I'm planning my next move. I literally, once I get my stuff together and I get the messaging, messaging has, is everything. Messaging is everything. Once I get the messaging down and I get the platform up, I can literally make seven figures in a few months. I've done it. That's why I'm not sitting here stressed and, you know, once again, to the life insurance. Listen, beautiful people, understand my life ain't your life. My life ain't your life. And one of the things that I have done because we're in this global reset is I have tamped down the receipt pudding. I used to put up receipts, like when I was paying myself last year before I got in the car rental business, I got up to $50,000 in like two months in my personal, from paying myself on my company. Because once again, I don't spend money. And once again, you know, I'm not trying to make myself a target, so I'm not doing any more receipts or anything like that. But um, my life is way different than your life. And I don't say that to be uh, condescending. It's just, this is one of the reasons I love my consulting calls with successful entrepreneurs, because we can talk. We can talk. I, I had one the other day, God just said I bought myself a brand new a Ferrari, you know, it's like, congratulations, we talked about the car, he said, you know, I can have those conversations with other successful people, I cannot have that situate those conversations with people who are not successful, because it comes across as, you're boasting, and you're bragging, and you got all this money, yeah, it must be, not, blah, 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 and that's one of the reasons that I have um, understated my presentation. You know, I got it. people, <laughs> people have been tripping about this. And uh, I got the simple black thumbnails because I want to give you guys, you know, there's this guy, the radical marketer, and he has this saying, I give you all stuff, no fluff. <laughs> I found that funny. And I want to give you guys factual stuff because um, as I plan my next move, because once again, uh, like right now, I've been dealing with wrecked cars. That's what I've been dealing with all January, wrecked cars. And I, I was like, it, it, it's been like hard to get them out there. Because at one point, I had seven wrecked cars in the parking lot, and I got rid of two. One should be gone today. They should come pick it up. And systematically, when you work on one thing at a time, that's when you get things done. I'm not like trying to do like three and four and five and six and no, no. But once again, man, um, that video, Black Money, a lot of people, a lot of y'all got it. A lot of y'all got it. And I got a lot of folks who are like self-hate and you should come here to see Black. All right, all right. I'm about to say something. I used to live in Sandy Springs, zip code 30327. Google the home prices in that area. And for the last 12 years, I have seen real wealth. Arthur Blank was one of my neighbors. You know, the guy who owns the Falcons, Home Depot, Arthur Blank was one of my neighbors. So I have seen real wealth up close and personal. And it is not none of this finesse, fake ass, black wealth. Uh, there was a guy, uh, I'm not even gonna get into particulars, but he supposedly does this other thing, but he sells something that's completely different from what he does. You know, once again, I'm just sitting there like, okay. Because uh, one of the things you will see, <clears throat> and this is one of the reasons that I'm being really kind of careful with the credit thing is there's a pro, pro, uh, proliferation of credit channels people doing reviews on the chase everyone loves navy federal and honestly i don't know if i want to be associated with that because um to me credit is simple credit is simple if you have good credit and you don't have the ability to repay your credit you don't use it it's pretty simple for, but once again, during this global reset, we've got people using credit cards to buy gas, to buy food, to buy essentials, and they don't have the money. And it's a ticking time bomb before they max out that credit card. 
So uh, one of the things that, you know, like with credit, because here, here's, here's a painful truth. You are better off having high cash flow than you are having credit. This is one of the reasons that I have 40 credit cards that I've, I don't, you know, I've recently started using them because they're changing the credit game. Because if you know this, there's a number of institutions that have soft pull pre-qualifications where they look at your credit and tell you yes and no before you get that hard inquiry. And the, the whole banking game has changed. And one of the things that I've noticed, um, I now have 1% utilization across, you know, and it's kind of annoying because 40 credit cards, that's a lot of payments to keep track of. And I, you know, I, I, I guess I should put it on auto pay, but uh, my credit score went up a little bit. Not a whole bunch, but about 20 points. My credit score went up 20 points. And when I got that car, my credit score went up about 25 points. So it does matter, it does matter. So I have 1% utilization, like I was just pulling out cards and buying coffee and buying stuff in the convenience store because I refuse, like uh, some of my older credit cards, the interest rates is trash. There ain't no way I would ever carry a balance on this. And you know, once again, I pretty much will not be using my personal credit. I have five, I have five business credit cards. So if I had something where I would have a carrier balance, I would put in the business credit card. I would never ever carry a balance on my personal credit card. Unless um, I do it in a certain way, it would have to be a well-structured and organized play because what will happen is when you start carrying balances on your personal credit, your score just, it tanks. I mean, it tanks. Uh, as Sebi talked about, he let a balance report and as Sebi has 30 credit cards, he let one credit card max out. His credit score dropped 30 points. One, just one credit card. So one of the things that you have to do is learn the, the credit game. And one of the things that you should do, and here's a tip for you, if you're gonna carry a balance, you should get an installment loan because the weight of an installment loan isn't like the weight of a revolving credit card. You can get an installment loan, AKA my car, and your credit score can go up. So if you wanna carry a balance, go to the bank and get an installment loan. It will actually make your credit score better. You're welcome. Because one again, because like, once again, like I know credit, but here's the thing, and this is the painful truth. Cash flow to me is better than credit because when you have good credit, you can only go to so far with that credit. And this is one of the reasons that you know I'm being really careful because like I don't want to be associated because right now you're seeing all these guns guys on YouTube talking about get credit, get funding for your business. And I'm about to tell you something. If you get funding from credit for your business and you start a business and it fails. Now you have two problems. You have a failed business and you have this debt that you have to pay back because yes, business credit cards when used correctly do not report to your personal credit, right? But if you default on those business credit cards, it will report to your personal credit. So uh, I'm gonna tell you, this is hard. It's still possible, but it's hard. When you get business credit that is 100% EIN based, they never get your social, they never have to have a um, one of the members of the LLC to do a PG. You can tank that business credit and it will not report to your personal. Years and years ago, before everything changed, before these you must know your customer rules that Congress passed, you could literally start an LLC get your net 30s and get a Home Depot MasterCard with a $10,000 limit in six months. Or you could go ahead and get your Paydex up and go to Ford Fleet and roll out with an F-250 on your business credit. No personal credit check. Once again, these things are still possible, but you have to be well positioned on how to do these. 
and you once again you need to be making some money you need to be making some money because um one of the things that i'm consistently seeing with the beautiful lives like graham stephan um he's an entertainer he is not a financial educator dave ramsey is a financial educator but once again dave ramsey's advice is not going to work for average people it's just not but he's selling it because Dave Ramsey is selling something. He is selling a product. He has to make it sound better than it is to get people to buy in. And one of the things, and I'm not mad at Dave, because like I said in the video, nothing that Dave says will financially harm you. If you follow Dave Ramsey advice, more than likely, number one, the whole thing of getting out of debt. And this is one of the reasons that I've been really, really judicious with debt um, I just on the personal side I have one car that's financed which I got for the rental car business and that didn't work out and once spring rolls around I'm selling that bad boy that's a convertible it's, I'm selling it I'm getting rid of it because this, this is funny having three cars can kind of be a nuisance because I drive the SUV that's my daily driver and I drive the Porsche two or three times a week. And I have to remember to drive the Mercedes because if I don't drive it, the battery's gonna wear down. So I have to drive it at least once or twice a month to keep the battery charged up. And one of the things, like I, once I get rid of that, I'll probably just have two cars because having multiple cars, it sounds sexy, but you get my insurance, my insurance is like $653 because I have three very expensive cars. My insurance is more than most people's car payments. My insurance. And there, there's some other insurance I have on there. So um, one of the things you need to, and we're gonna be talking about this because as I put together this new thing that I'm going to launch after Super Bowl Sunday, because uh, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna start having these, the training Sundays about three, maybe three, three to 5 p.m. because that's the day that most people are off and they can attend. And we're gonna start getting into this education because just like, I am surprised at how many people don't understand that stocks do not represent compound interest. I did a little poll on that and a lot of folks think that stocks represent, and they don't. Stocks don't pay interest. Stocks go up because the value of the underlying company of that stock goes up or the value of that company may go down. So I was really surprised at how many people did not know that. So we'll get into this financial education and life skills because, um, you know, once again, I'm not trying to be dismissive, but my life ain't nothing like yours. Like I can go to the bank right now and pull out $10,000 cash out of my personal checking account out of my personal checking account. I can go out and pull six figures out of my business account right now. And funny story with that, one time when I was buying cars, I tried to write a check for $100,000 and the teller just started laughing. She's like, boo, we can't do that. <laughs> she just started laughing. She said, we, we can't do that. So once again, not to be elitist, not to say that I'm better than you guys, I'm not better than you guys. Um, I consistently am in that position because one of the things, and you will see here on the YouTubes, that you should take your money out the bank and you should invest in the stock market and all this other stuff. Uh, as an entrepreneur that has been around for two decades, 23 years, um, I know the power of having cash available as an entrepreneur. And also, I'm gonna be talking about something called money velocity. Because of money velocity, I don't worry about inflation. I can literally make seven figures in a few months. I ain't worried about inflation because I can make money so fast that it, inflation doesn't, it, I don't, I know inflation is real, prices have gone up, but Gas has gone up, but it doesn't impact me. I still, whenever I pull over, I always fill up. I never go, hey man, can I get 10 on number six and some white out? 
I don't feel inflation. Inflation is real, and I know that many of you are feeling it. Many of you have seen that your money has gotten tighter, food prices have gone. Once again, I'm not dismissing that, but I'm saying for me personally, I don't feel inflation. Like right now, uh, I got this new Apple Watch because it's a little bit bigger. And I, the old one was perfectly fine. I do stuff like that. And um, once again, money velocity, when you can make money so fast, inflation doesn't really phase you. It doesn't. Because like right now, you know, like I get people who are jealous that they cannot start a YouTube channel and sell a product. They're just jealous because that's why they mention it. It's like you selling online courses like selling online courses is super easy and anyone can do it. You know, what I mean, people, there, there are some groups. There's a teachable group and there's a think of it group on Facebook. And the number of people in there who have online courses who ain't making a dime. <laughs> See, there, there's a there's a technique. There's a process, and that's something that I will outline in the intellectual property school. Because once again, once, one of the reasons I'm not selling anything is I had like seven wrecked cars. It was bothering me. It's like, we got a process. So I started nudging my adjusters. I got one good adjuster who emails me pretty much, lets me know what's going on. But uh, typically, man, um, that's what I'm working on getting these wrecked cars processed, cleaning up the parking lot, and just doing this, because I got this white one, should be picked up, because the guy's got, like, that just blew my mind that the guy snatched a 2009, and the 2009 Camry looks totally different than the 2012. He just, he just snatched it. He took someone else's car, so he's gotta bring that car back, and then pick up the white one. And then, um, I'm gonna push some more to get some more of these um, wrecked cars processed because um, it, it's been bothering me because, and th this is one of the things I hate about the car business. As a car owned business owner, you're responsible for those cars because they're in my name. And then here's a little story. I had some cars stolen from a repair facility and because the cars were in my name, I was the one that had to file a police report. The, re the repair, you know, the repair place had the VIN number and everything. They couldn't file it. I had to. And this is one of the reasons that I hated the car business because it always comes back to me. Uh, for the stolen car, I had to fill out an affidavit, get it notarized, sign and mail back. I'm just sitting there like, what the hell? So that's going to be a pretty big check. That's going to be a check of about 15,000 for the stolen Range Rover. And then I got a check that's coming for the Camry. That's going to be um, like 10,000. And, um, you know, I'm telling you, the best thing you can have if you're in the rental car business is to have someone else hit your car. You don't want to deal with higher cars insurance. Higher cars insurance is trash. It is just, it is trash. There, there's been, so, I'm going to do a whole separate video on that once all this is over because there's so many data points that I can put out. But yeah, uh, right now I'm just trying to clean up my kitchen because um, one of the things that I've learned with this business is it is not a good business. Because, you, you know, many people ask about the car rental course. I have mean, people, it's like, I am not going to teach you how to get in the car rental business because I feel the car rental business is a very bad business. Once again, renting cars on hire car is a bad business. Maybe Toro, my experiences on Toro, Toro just stopped. So I didn't really have these kind of bad experiences on Toro. And I don't know anything about renting exotic cars because I never did it, so I can't speak to that but I can speak to hire car, don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. You're renting to demo people. You're renting to the worthless people. This is who you're renting to. And right now I got a whole bunch of lates and I'm just sitting here because I, I hate this because what it means is this weekend I will be cutting off cars and going to get them. <laughs> and <clears throat> it is, it, it's, it's irritating because these people will not bring your car back. They will not do it. They have no conscientious trick. It is annoying that, all right, you got my car, you should be paying me, you're not paying me, 
and you won't bring the car back. They just won't. And um, it, it is, because like I said, this, this whole month I've been dealing with car stuff and um, it, it's been annoying. It's just annoying. So once again, I am not going to do a car rental course on hire car. I'm not going to teach you. I'm, I would be leading you into a burning building. I'm not going to do that because once the thing, I, I have ethics and I'm not going to lie to you to get your money. I'm not going to shade certain things. And uh, a lot of y'all have saying that and I've seen in the comments over. It's like this guy actually tells the truth. I, I really appreciate that because here's the thing. When you guys get the truth, you make better decisions. You make better decisions. You know, and all these people are talking about it's the doom and gloom channel and blah, blah, blah. You guys want me to piss down your back and tell you, oh, that's that's rainwater, baby. Don't worry about that. Don't turn around. Don't turn around. You may see some. Don't turn around. So once you guys get the truth, um, you make better decisions. And I will not create a how to. No, 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 no. Not on the things I've learned. I've had 18 people arrested in eight months for stealing my cars because they wouldn't bring them back. They wouldn't bring them back. I've had GPS kill switches disabled and dismantled. Uh, the thought on the Range Rover is the GPS kill switch was ripped out based upon the messaging that my GPS provider got. They feel that it was ripped out. So I'm just sitting there like, and that's a check that I'm probably going to get in February. And I'm probably going to get the check for, I don't know when I'm getting the check for the Camry. But I had seven red cars. And I'm just sitting there like, and I, had, I started, and this, this is another reason I'm not doing, uh, I'm, I'm not teaching about the car business. I started off with 31 cars. I'm down to 25 now. So you're going to have an attrition rate and anytime that your car is wrecked, you're looking at minimum two months to four months to get it back on the road or to get made whole. So once again, so that's all I got for you guys. Like I said, <clears throat> there's some new training coming up. Maybe you can, you know, uh, I, I, got, I need to work on that. I, this is a, a busy day. I got some things I got to do. So I'll be working on that, but it's coming once again. Uh, Super Bowl is February 13th. And then that Sunday after that, we will launch the new program. So I got a little time to get it together. So give me a little time because a lot of you have been asking for mentoring. A lot of you've been going to, because like right now, I'm not really selling anything. I just have a weekly training for the people who are already enrolled in certain things and that's it that's pretty much the only thing that's going on because once again i the I'm processing cars man it, it is it is it's a nightmare it's a nightmare so that's all i got for you guys i will see you in the next one have a beautiful friday <laughs>